So, I'm tired. Uh, it's been a long day. I've been working on some content or another all day. Uh, and y'all will have some real cool shit to look forward to tomorrow. Um, I'm trying to ramp up content production. Because I need to do uh, stupid things like pay rent and eat. And uh, I need to, you know deserve the support that's given or I will not get support um, and in that spirit I thought I would bring up an interesting uh, sort of story so Biden pardoned a bunch of marijuana possession offenders offenders it's a fucking plant and <laughs> this is being seen as awesome. Now, this whole thing, if you ask me, is a circus. You know, it's just... I'll, I'll read, I'll read this statement, because I think y'all will agree with me once I do. So, here's the statement. As I often said during my campaign for president, no one should be in jail just for using or possessing marijuana. Sending people to prison for possessing marijuana has upended too many lives and incarcerated people for conduct that many states no longer prohibit. Criminal records for marijuana possession have also imposed needless barriers to employment, housing, and educational opportunities. And while white and black brown people use marijuana at similar rates, black and brown people have been arrested, prosecuted, and convicted at disproportionate rates. Huh. Maybe because you made a bunch of laws in the form of your crime bill, you know, that, uh, that you pretty much stand behind. Maybe that's why you're sticking with weed here. I'll, I'll get to that, though. You know. Um, and he continues, Today, I am announcing three steps that I am taking to end this failed approach. First, I am announcing a pardon of all prior federal offenses of simple possession of marijuana. I have directed the Attorney General to develop an administrative process for the issuance of certificates of pardon to eligible individuals. There are thousands of people who have prior federal convictions for marijuana possession who may be denied employment, housing, or educational opportunities as a result. My action will help relieve the collateral consequences arising from this con these convictions collateral consequences as though that was like unintentional whoopsie we fucked up your life because you had a plant whoopsie more like whoopsie we fucked up your life because we want a for-profit massive fucking prison system um and, and the only thing that we've done to curtail that at all uh, allegedly is end private prisons by transferring all their contracts to the u.s government Nationalizing the private prison industry doesn't make it a non-industry, you know? And, uh, and <laughs> these weren't collateral consequences. These were baked in. This was a feature, not a bug. But he wants to bullshit like he's doing something awesome. And for these thousands of people, sure, awesome. We'll get to that, too. Second... I am urging all governors to do the same with regard to state offenses. Just as no one should be in a federal prison solely due to the possession of marijuana, no one should be in a local jail or state prison for that reason either. Third, I'm asking the Secretary of Health and Human Services and the Attorney General to initiate the administrative process to review expeditiously how marijuana is scheduled under federal law. Federal law currently classifies marijuana in Schedule 1 of the Controlled Substances Act, the classification meant for the most dangerous substances. This is the same schedule 
as for heroin and LSD, and even higher than the classification of fentanyl and methamphetamine, the drugs that are driving our overdose epidemic. Finally, even as federal and state regulation of marijuana changes important limitations on trafficking, marketing, and underage sales should stay in place. Too many lives have been upended because of our failed approach. <laughs> Just undercuts everything and people lapped it up. Oh shit, look at this. Finally, even as federal and state regulation of marijuana changes important limitations on trafficking and marketing. Now, what does that mean? Well, uh, it means that uh, he doesn't have to get rid of, you know, the convictions for everybody who marketed it to these people or trafficked it to these people. He doesn't have to upend their convictions for being the reason that these people had it to begin with. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not decriminalized. There can be more federal prisoners after these ones are pardoned because the laws aren't changed. And, um... <laughs> They can still lock up people for selling them and probably still lock people up for like having a certain amount of money on their person because asset forfeiture is still a thing and prosecution for things affiliated with asset forfeiture is still a fucking thing. It doesn't matter that this is gone. It doesn't matter. Like not to the vast majority of cases. There are millions of marijuana-related arrests, like, fucking regularly. And, and people just lap this up, like it's, like it's him decriminalizing weed. Like, what? I got moths in my room. <laughs> I, it's, it's just, it's just hilarious. Because, let me, let me, let me break this down for you. This is just federal offenses. Twitter put out this fucking card for him. They they were all happy about it. They said, President Biden announces executive order pardoning Americans convicted of simple marijuana possession under federal law. Um, <clears throat> and he they, they went on to say that 6,500 people convicted from 1992 to 2001 will benefit from the decision. Just 6.5 thousand people. That's it. That's all. And yes, okay. Good for them. But while we're uh, over here celebrating what this fascist piece of shit is doing for 6,500 people, um, why don't we also go over the fact that, uh, you know, there's still a fuck ton of people. How many, you ask? 40,000, 40 fucking thousand Americans are incarcerated for marijuana offenses. That was in 2020. There's more now. This is why people need to look beyond Twitter's trending tabs and why people need to actually look into the news for themselves. Right? Right? Because he did this symbolic gesture. And he waited how fucking long since he was president? How fucking long did he wait? Oh, right. Just enough time to have this potentially affect midterms. If voting works at all, even. If you don't see that this is a transparent pandering attempt, I don't know what to tell you. Because 6.5k out of 40k is like not even most. Not even a quarter. But people are acting like he's the second coming because he fucking... Mm, 
he 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 freed six point five thousand slaves from the U.S. prison system. Meanwhile, uh, freeing up a bunch of cells so that he can totally not fill them with somebody else. It's not like their prisons are kind of full and they need room for other types of offenders. It's not like they might be ramping up to jail dissenters. It's not like Rex 84 or anything, right? No, nah, it couldn't be. <laughs> so, while you celebrate this, know that it's a tiny drop in the bucket compared to marijuana offenses, and it's not even really a dent compared to the total system. This is pandering. He's pandering to you. And and the arrests are still racially disproportionate. That's not changing because of this. They're going to be racially disproportionate, especially since... Their policies are informed by people like Mike Bloomberg, who gave Biden $100,000 to win Florida because Mike Bloomberg was mayor of NYC. And he made these policies that said that you could just Xerox a description of black and brown minorities and fucking poor communities and throw them up against a wall and stop and frisk them. That's what Mike Bloomberg said. And he's the supporter of Biden that allegedly put him over the top in terms of campaign finance. That's where we are. You know? And while this is going on and while he uh waxes all amusing with uh with with his <laughs> total recanting near the end there which undercuts the entire point like oh yeah, you can't you can't be in jail for it. Uh, if you were incarcerated during a specific and arbitrary period of time, but you you can definitely still go if you sold it, or if we think you sold it, <laughs> or if you trafficked it from another place so that you could sell it, or if you want to market it. Yeah, uh, it's almost like this changes basically nothing. And it just frees up the cells for more prisoners. Because they're not going to close down a prison because the net population shrunk. They're going to find a way to fill those voids. <sighs> it's exhausting, you know? And, and, and while, he, while he goes off on these, these rants on Twitter and says, you know, no one should be in It's a virtue signal. This is a virtue signal. This is the anatomy of the virtue signal. We still need to imp need important limitations on trafficking, marketing, and underage sales. So, he is still going to do that to people, and at the same time as this pandering is happening, suddenly, what's this? Federal agents are investigating Hunter Biden, the son of President Joe Biden, and they've collected what they believe is sufficient evidence to charge him with tax crimes and gun purchase crimes. The Washington Post reports, Wow. This is... This is like a lot of evidence of hypocrisy. For two years, he could have pardoned these people. Right? And why is this auto-updating? Well, because Twitter didn't have a card for this. Twitter didn't force this in front of people. They did, however, explain the trend and force a bunch of mainstream news uh, articles to the top. And and Bill O'Reilly? I hate him. He, he's he's a, a racist piece of shit, but he's right. That if the House committee is investigating Hunter Biden and Joe Biden financial situation, come across documents that show Joe Biden himself received money, that's an impeachable offense. <laughs> Just a bunch of mainstream media people talking about it because we can't have anybody else 
don't share this video with anybody. But also, they forced it to the top when it was Joe Biden, right? When it was Joe Biden pardoning marijuana offenses, they forced it to the top. But when his son, who was not reported to the government over his crack addiction and other addictions, or any of these other things, when the f fucking family clearly knew about it, when that guy is coming under legal fire... Maybe Biden wants to distract from that by being like, okay, fine. I'll fucking pardon some weed offenses. Still vote for blues and Democrats and fucking midterms. It's evil. It's pandering. It's sick. And nobody should believe the hype. And I really, really want to emphasize that that's all this is. It's just pandering, virtue signaling, and hype. It's nothing else. Because if he actually authentically cared about these uh, offenders, he would pardon all of them. Every single person involved in marijuana, trafficking, marketing, those people would be allowed out too. All he's doing is pardoning for simple possession. But if you're one of the reasons those people could smoke that weed, yeah, you're still you're still locked up. Because he doesn't authentically give a fuck. And pardoning a bunch of drug dealers might look a little bit bad while his son is dodging drug offenses. Because he's a fucking drug abuser. Who Biden would have locked up if Biden had the chance and wasn't related to him. Nepotism, favoritism, fucking potential money, <laughs> fucking virtue signaling and pandering right near the midterms from the guy who's the literal reason this is all possible to begin with because he wrote the crime bill that locked up so many people for simple drug offenses. Yeah, I think that's yet more evidence we need to smash the fucking state.